Welcome to Crush Yoga with Ria. This is a flow sequence that I hope you really will enjoy both in body, soul and mind. Please bring some blocks if you have. You can use anything that will lift you a little bit off the floor. We're going to use them for our hands. Today's theme is about faith and or fear. I think there's a lot of fear in our society today. Fear of the future, fear of what happens in our current situation with Corona and the world. So we're going to elaborate a little bit about this faith and fear situation. But first, a little bit of breathing. So sit down on your mat. As always, tall spine and sitting bones on the mat. Close your eyes. And whatever you need to prepare for today's class, do that. Side out or move your shoulders. Maybe pray just very briefly with me. God, Son and Holy Spirit, please come. Come and heal. Come and give us faith to live in love and life and not fear. Just one minute of deep breathing before we start warming up. So you can place one hand on your chest and one on your belly if that makes sense. And notice how it feels as you breathe. So with the slow breath, we calm the body. And we take our minds a little bit uh, off our everyday life. And then take your hands down on your knees or your thighs. We're going to do a little bit of circling, seated. So slow circles to soften your body, your spine, all the muscles, abdomen. So when I talk about living in faith or fear, faith, I mean living with the purpose that God loves us, that God is in control, and I'm not. I don't have to control or understand everything. So it's a life of more rest and peace. That's what I mean, living in faith. And of course, you're not a strong believer. You might have your faith in, in something else. But uh, still the life in, in faith that I, I think of. So if you think about living in faith or living in fear, what would you say? Would you live like 50-50 or <laughs> 10-90 or and to what side? So think about this, draw those circles the other way around.
and then stop moving. Find your down dog. You can even move your wrists a little bit before getting into it. Spreading your fingers out, stepping your feet back, hip up and back. Then walk one leg at the time or bend one leg at the time. Finding some easeful movements. And if you want to use your ujjayi breath, you're welcome to do that. That snoring exhale, so you might hear it in the microphone as well. <laughs> so that's softened by warming up, coming into your plank. Lower down on your knees and then do a soft up dog. So hip down, gaze towards the ceiling or heaven. <laughs> Using your core navel in as you move your hip back on your knees, move your hip behind your knee joints and from there lift hips up or your hip <laughs> up and back. Again, inhale as you come to plank, exhaling knees down, easy down dog or up dog. Inhaling, moving your hip back and exhale up, down dog. Two more times, as slowly as possible. Plank, up dog, shoulders back, open up your chest. Inhaling, moving back, maybe you reach almost to your child's pose here before you get into down dog. Last time. Up dog. Broaden through your chest, sternum lifts towards the sky. Move your hip back, stretched, stretching your spine. And down dog. Awesome. Now step your right leg to the top end of the mat. And this is where you're going to use your blocks. And we're going to have left knee on the floor. So I always fold my mat for the sake of my knee. So you take your blocks. And I know you might not need them, but they're really comfortable <laughs> to have and it will ease your practice. So why not? All right. So find your low lunge, move your hip forward. Again, shoulders back, kind of your navel, your stomach towards your thigh here. And then slowly move your hip back. You can have your front foot on the floor. It will give you a stretch here on the front of your foot. Lean forward. Don't go for your deepest stretch. And those two small movements, we're going to switch in between. So move to a low lunge, thigh and navel close. Leaning back, maybe adjusting, walking your blocks closer. Either following one breath or two or four as you move forth and back. Close your eyes. And put all your awareness down in this front leg. Where do you feel it? Last time. And from here, move your blocks to the side. We're going to step back. So tuck the toes under, step back to down dog. Optional vinyasa. So you can do your plank. To low plank, elbows by your ribs. Watch your blocks. <laughs> Inhaling, lifting your chest up, cobra or up dog. And your down dog. One more time of that. Inhaling to plank. Exhaling, lower down, knees or toes. Cobra up dog, inhale. And make your way back to down dog, exhaling. Your left leg to the front, and we do this lunch walk 
forth and back on the opposite side. So left leg or just other leg. So don't worry about doing this right or wrong. It's about getting into your body and just moving. So first, just settle in here. Broadening again through your chest. Chest, try to think of your sternum here, kind of lifting up without doing a back bend. And then move your hip back. Let the sole of the front foot stay there. I'm very tend to, or used to lifting the sole off, but I'm trying to stretch the shin. And again to the front. As we did before, you can move with a breath. So one thing about living in faith, I find, is a consequence of that, is trying to live more in the moment. Instead of fearing the future or the past, but just noticing right now and finding the peace that God gives in the present moment. And this is also why it's awesome just to close your eyes right now and just feel how this affects your body as you move with ease, forth and back, not trying to overdo anything. Just softening the tissues, the ligaments, the joints. And the next time you're at the top end of your mat with the front knee, you bend it, move your blocks aside. And then we're going to step the top end of the mat and do some more traditional flow yoga. Slow flow, we might call it. Again, soften your knees and fold forward. Then gather your toes and your knees completely, as much as you can, of course. <laughs> Sit down in your chair pose. So hip back, again, gaze on the ground somewhere. Squeezing your inner thighs and breathing. Drawing your hands down, grasping your hands behind you, squeezing your shoulder blade together as you fold forward. Quite a bit of balance here when we have our knees, feet together. Letting go of the hands again, chair pose. Straight spine. Hands together in prayer pose. Then you twist to your left side. So your right elbow moves to your left side. Draw your shoulder blades away from your ears. Stabilize your hip. Let your fingers reach down. Stretch both legs. Foot fold forward. Fingers on the mat. Then you lift your right leg all the way back, stretch it out, lift, up, lift it up as much as you can. And maybe your hands find your blocks if you're <laughs> placed here in front of you. Squaring your hips up aligned, uh, off aligned with the floor and then bending the standing knee, drawing this right knee underneath yourself like a little bit of a, a ball here. Or maybe take your chin towards your chest and then extend both legs reaching out Maybe your spine horizontal if you come up on this high level of the block. So you can choose. Squeezing it in, maybe on a huge exhale, and extending up and back. Just a few more times. Make sure that standing leg, your left leg, that the kneecap and the toes are pointing in the exact same direction. And one last time, might feel this 
fire going on in your thighs. And lower down your right leg, the back end of the mat. And you can even take your blocks with you here. White leg at forward fold. You can lift the front feet off the mat and fold down. Elongate your spine. Take a look at your toes so you're not looking in towards your chest. Then bending the front leg there. Moving into your white legged forward fold. So both feet turn on the mat. Make sure your heels are aligned and maybe you'll get a little bit more distance, whatever works for you. Let your head hang. Always option of putting a little bit more weight onto your, the sole of the front foot there. Toes. And for the next part, you might not be able to watch the screen, but I think you might know what we're going to do. So the front foot, so this will be your left foot, will stay aligned with the short end of the mat. And then you pivot the front foot so you get into warrior two, looking towards the back end of your mat. Now, if this is not familiar to you, you might just move around on your mat, okay? Just do that. But looking back. And then doing your side angle, so elbow down on your thigh, reaching the opposite arm above your head. And let's do a little bit of circles with this arm. So this, take the chest down towards the floor, not really a lot, just a little bit, so that your hand here, left arm, can do a draw, big, big, big circle. Up towards the ceiling, towards the ear, and then move. And your gaze can follow this hand <laughs> if it's not too hard. One more big circle. And when your hands are down, walk through your white legged forward fold down into your regular place <laughs> with your hands. Step your feet back so you stand like you all mostly likely do normally on your mat. Vinyasa if you like, inhale to plank. Exhaling lower down. Moving in good cobra, up dog. And then your down dog. Let's do the other side. So jump and walk to the top end of the mat. Feet together. Make sure your blocks are nearby. Sit down in your chair pose. Find your breath. Take your hands down here behind you. If you can't reach the hands, just hold the down part of the arm, reaching forward with your eyes open. Otherwise, you might fall. <laughs> Letting go of your hands, chair pose again. Take a look at your knees, your hip, and make sure that stays somewhat where it is. Also, when twisting, so hands together, twist to your right side. Palms somewhat firmly together. Looking down, hands down on the floor. <sighs> Hopefully nice to stretch those legs again. <laughs> Halfway up, finding, finding your blocks. Left leg up and back and you might, you know, just awaken <laughs> the legs a little bit. And then we do what we did before. Soften your right knee, bending it. Make sure the knee doesn't really come a lot above the toes here, maybe a little bit. Drawing your left knee in, kicking it out again, stretching whatever you can stretch here. 
And then do it a few more times, maybe with your breath or maybe not. It's a really good idea though to exhale when you're kind of squeezing together. Let's do it one more time. And lower down, left leg, white pyramid fold. So please take your blocks with you. Back heel on the mat, lean forward. And I have this time my toes lifted so I can kind of wiggle with them if I liked. You can definitely put your, your foot on the ground, no worries. And lift up, go through your white legged forward fold again. Toes pointing to the side, both feet somewhat aligned with the short end of the mat, maybe the toes, toes a little bit in. Moving into warrior two. This time, your right leg stays aligned with the short end of the mat and your left leg moves with the long end of the mat. Make sure your knees, front leg there is stacked exactly around or uh, over the ankle. Long arms looking again, in your case, to the back. And then this side angle, elbow down without le really leaning in. And this arm reaches up. And again, drawing some circles. Take your hand down, shoulders here somewhat aligned with the floor. And when you draw your arms up towards the ceiling, your shoulders are stacked. So living in fear might feel like just living, you know, uh, in this hamster wheel, like everything is just on repeat and you might fear that it's going on repeat, drawing everything in a big circle. <laughs> so when we live in fear, we tend to focus on things that are negative. We tend to give up, to have less, less joy and worry a lot. And to be honest, I don't want to live that life. Probably you won't either. And this last time, take your hands down on the mat, walking through your white leg at forward fold, soften. Walk your feet or your hands mainly to the top end of the mat where your hands normally are. Step back, down dog. Vinyasa, inhale to plank. Lower down, soft as you lower down, lifting up and then child's pose. Let your hips sink back towards your heels. If you have any knee issues, just be mindful. on your knees again. Tabletop, just a few cat cows warming up for our, our back bend. And also called heart opener. And today, this pose, the camel pose, might represent opening up to faith. Opening up to saying, I don't want to be living in fear that my future is painted in black or gray due to fear. 
God, help me to trust that you are in control so I can live in faith. Come down up on your knees. I've always fold my mat for this one. Tuck your toes under and make sure you don't overdo this. It's always easier to come down than coming up. Okay, today I, I might just do a soft version of this. Hands to support your lower back and just lifting up. And you can go definitely the whole way back. And make sure that your hip though and knee stays aligned. Draw your shoulder blades back. And if you can concentrate, maybe this is a, a prayer of help me, God, to open my heart to faith, to trust in you. Engage in your core as you come up. And then child's pose again, tucking your toenails on the floor, foreheads on the mat. Lifting up, coming down, seated on your mat, or you can even sit on a block or fold a part of your mat to elevate your hip a little bit off the mat. Feet out to each side, toes pointing up, and however far you want to go, go with that. Anything that really doesn't work here, take your fist or a block or something like that underneath your knee joint as you maybe lean forward a little bit. And stay there with your breath. I'll read a verse that speaks to, to all of this. It's from James, or Jacob, as he was also called. Passage, translation. He writes back then 2,000 years ago, but still very relevant. <laughs> My fellow believers, when it seems as though you are facing nothing but difficulties. See it as an invaluable opportunity to experience the greatest joy that you can. For you know that when your faith is tested, it stirs up in you the power of endurance. So maybe we can feel like in this life, listening to friends and families and people around us, that our faith is tested. Our faith that God is good <laughs> or in control. But let's stay strong. Let's not just Surrender to fear. Sitting up tall. Moving your feet somewhere comfortable. Now we're going to lay down if you need to put socks or a shirt on or even a blanket. Welcome to, to just grab that. I'm going to do a side stretch. So you can move your... Or first take your arms above your head and then draw your feet, your legs to your, it can be your uh, left side. Your arms move the exact same direction as well. If you move your legs to the left side, you might put your right leg on top, but make sure that your hip here stays on the floor, sitting bone still on the mat. And it doesn't have to be a super deep stretch, just something that you can Maybe notice on your side. If not, don't worry. Close your eyes. You can even 
pull a little bit on your uh, right wrist, also to your left side. Relax your body. And as we rest here, you might speak to God about the fears in your life. If you had to mention three things that, that really fills you with fear or worries, speak to God about those, render those, say, God, help me. And you can stay with that as you slowly release. Coming back so you're more aligned with the mat. And then, of course, the other side as well. And remember, left and right side might feel very different. So don't cross the leg on both sides if it doesn't feel right. To continue to speak to, to God or whoever you believe in about your fears. And then come back on the mat. Maybe it feels nice to hug your knees in. And if there is one specific stretch you just have to have, <laughs> you're always welcome to do that before you find resting pose. It might be shoulders or plow pose or something. And let go. So I'll say a few things here in resting pose and you'll just be resting for three to four minutes. So make sure you don't get cold. Rest on the mat, toes falling out to the side, hands somewhere down. Notice that your shoulders are resting in a nice position. And I'm just really reminded, and I want to share that with you, because maybe it's something that God is reminding you, as well as me. So just close your eyes and listen, and take it in if it resonates with you. If you worry about kids, your kids, or your friends, your husband or wife. Remember that God is also God of them. God is also in control in their lives, when either they know it or not. You are not 
the healer or the mastermind that can make everything go right or perfect. Let go of that positioning of yourself as the one with all the responsibility for making others feel good. So live in faith that God, God knows, and he is there too. And as we rest three minutes in quietness on the mat, you might choose to put your hands on your chest or on your belly, whatever, or wherever, and speak to yourself, saying, thank you, God, that you are in control, or thank you, God, I choose to live in faith, So repeat to yourself any sentence that especially have spoken to you. Before we finish the class, I feel like I'm reminded to, to share that God is, is here. In your living room, God hears you. And he reaches his hands out saying, I can take away the fearful living let it go and receive my peace. So if you don't know how to pray or don't feel like praying, maybe just a yes, peace <laughs> is your prayer for now. I will finish the video now and 
I'll stay here on my mat just because you might have to do that as well and stay with what I said. Blessings on your path.